Earth and Venus are often thought of as twins or sister planets, but they're kind of evolutionary paths that diverged dramatically. Venus now has surface temperatures soaring to around 460 Celsius. That would melt lead. And it's got a pressure that's 90 times greater. So to get that sort of pressure here on Earth, you have to be a kilometer underwater. And then it's also got really toxic atmosphere. So a very different world. Yeah, but other than that, just like Earth. <laughs> Not yet. The standard idea, let's put it that way, was that Venus at some point had surface water, maybe oceans, a temperate climate. Maybe that's not true. Yeah, exactly. So we've realized that each of the two kind of climate past theories that have been proposed for Venus, and that is one Venus kind of being like Earth with oceans, temperate climate, and the other Venus being basically what it is like today, hellish hot. These two kind of theories leave a very different imprint on the ins inside of the planet. Now, if Venus was once habitable, that would leave kind of a water-rich interior of the planet. But if Venus was never habitable, if it was always this hellish, hot, born this way, that water inventory would have been depleted way earlier on in its lifetime and would have left the inside very, very dry. Now, we do the same thing for Earth. To understand what is inside Earth, we often look at volcanoes. We look at what comes out of a volcano because it's coming directly from the inside of the planet. So we try to do the same for Venus. We can see there's volcanoes on Venus. Another paper earlier on this year looked at radar images of the surface and it observed lava flowing, essentially. So yes, we know that there is currently volcanism in Venus. Now, the gases on that Venus's volcanoes are releasing are about 6% water. But if we were to kind of put Earth's interior on Venus and let it do volcanism, that interior would release kind of 96%. <laughs> Water. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so Venus never had water on the surface then, probably? I mean, I, I think no. Given how dry the interior is, then it doesn't, it's not really consistent with Venus ever having oceans, ever having that kind of cool temperate climate to condense them. So now we know this, how does this support the ongoing exploration of our, our solar system and the solar systems beyond ours? Venus, Earth, and Mars, they provide this natural laboratory almost for studying how habitability or the lack of it evolves. It helps us understand what it took for Earth to become habitable versus what it took for its twins to become. So Venus hellish and Mars kind of cold and dry. Um, and like you said, it's also important for looking at exoplanets, especially because most of exoplanet science is now kind of driven or motivated by searching for other habitable worlds. Now instruments that we've got now, like the James Webb Space Telescope, are best at studying the atmospheres of planets close to their host star. So Venus-like planets. If Venus was habitable in its past, then it would mean that the other planets that we have found have the potential to be habitable. But if Venus was never habitable, then it makes all these Venus-like exoplanets that we're detecting and studying less likely candidates for life. So it kind of means we just need to narrow our search right. uh, when looking for life to planets more like Earth or exo-Earths.